Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Warner here with realagriculture.com. Welcome back to another episode of Canola School. Today we're joined by Warren Ward. He's an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. How's it going today, Warren? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Thanks for joining us here. Now, you guys are running a trial out here at the Scott Research Center uh, talking a little bit about liquid versus granular FOSS. Talk to me a little bit about what you guys are doing out here. Yeah, so it's uh, it's Work's trial that, uh, that they They've got looking at uh, wanting to explore the differences between liquid and and granular starter phosphorus sources. So, uh, really uh, fits well into that right source of the four R's. Absolutely. Now, uh, we got quite a few different uh, plots behind you here. Um, talk to me a little bit about which which are you guys finding to be better, liquid or granular? Yeah. So maybe a little bit of background or history behind that. In other parts of the world, they've seen some advantages in some cases to using uh, liquid starter fertilizers over the granular so uh, the the thought with this pr uh, project was to let's see if that that happens in uh, in Western Canadian conditions as well some of the past research that's been done more locally uh, tends to show that there there isn't but let's explore the options and, and see what what is available there are you guys finding anything out as of yet or still kind of collecting data still collecting data yeah so it uh, it's an ongoing project and uh, uh, things any anywhere from plant count to at the end of the yield and green seed all that will be will be taken into account for sure now let's talk a little bit about the FOSS placement uh, why is FOSS at the seeding in or near the seed row important yeah so if we look at the other R's in in the four R's so we're talked about the source already but now we're talking about rate and when it comes to, to rate uh, and, and especially with this trial it's all all of the phosphorus is being seed placed so they've capped the rate at 25 pounds of P205 so that's of FOSS per acre uh, which is the maximum say seed rate with canola um, and placement again is in that in that band in the soil so ideally that's where we want to see phosphorus placed is in in a band uh, when it comes to canola it does require more in a lot of cases depending on your yield target of course but uh, it's going to require more than that 25 pounds of phosphorus to to uh, uh, produce a crop so if we're not supplying it as fertilizer it's it's getting it from somewhere else in the soil and over time if we're not applying more than than that 25 pounds we're going to see those phosphorus levels de decline in the soil right so um as you're kind of saying the 25 pounds is kind of our minimum right that we're looking for but kind of the maximum that you're going to put right in that seed row uh where should guys be placing that extra phos over and above the 25 pounds yeah so if we know we want to apply more but we've already maxed out what we can safely apply in the seed row there are a couple other options usually it's whatever uh, uh you know if you've got a side band for instance or a mid row band and you can include the, that bonus or extra phosphorus in those in those side or mid row bands. Uh, then it's again in the soil where it's needed um, and and most efficient for the plants to to access it. Uh, you know, if a pre seed banding or a fall banding application is taking place, those are other options as well. I like to you know if uh, a lot of our systems are one pass at seeding, and so that does limit us a little bit in in some of those situations. What are growers going to be seeing? Let's say maybe they put a little too much foss in that right in that seed row what are going to be some of uh, the byproducts of that what are they going to be seeing in their crops yeah so when we're talking about safe amounts in the seed row that 25 pounds is uh, it's not set in stone either so uh, i've seen damage from as little as 15 pounds of phosphorus placed in the seed row so it all depends on environmental conditions things like your opener width and your row spacing the more concentrated that fertilizer band is with the seed the more potential for harm that there is there so if we if we look at that um, uh, you know some of the symptoms of too much phosphorus in the seed row or too much fertilizer in general in the seed row is just a lack of plants if we you know if the crop looks like it's not emerging well uh, one of the things I always like to ask is what was your seed placed fertilizer rate because especially on a drier year lighter textured soil we can start seeing uh, reduced germination or emergence from that seed placed fertilizer a quick and easy uh, uh, way to figure that out is when you're seeding 
planting, just turn your seed place uh, fertilizer off for a you know 100 foot stretch in the field. Turn it back on again because you don't want to forget about it. But then after emergence, come back and do some plant counts in that strip versus the rest of the field. Chances are you're going to see you probably had a little higher emergence, even if you are using a safe rate. But you're probably going to have a little higher emergence in that strip where you turn the seed place fertilizer off. Uh, but as long as it's within an acceptable amount, then then you're you're doing good. If it surprises you how many few fewer plants you have when you have seed place fertilizer, then maybe you need to start looking at, okay, what are some of the options I can do to, to place this fertilizer? Or is there a different product I could be using maybe to, to, to try and improve that seed safety? Now talking a little bit about side banding there and, you know, mitigating the chance of having phosphorus deficient soil. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier and it sounds like that can be a very lengthy process if you let your soil get to that point to rebuild that foss is something you don't want to do. Talk a little bit about that process. Yeah, so it is a lengthy and costly process to, to rebuild phosphorus levels that have been depleted in soil. With the exception, I didn't mention it earlier, but manure. Manure is a great way of building that phosphorus level in your soil if you have access to it. Uh, chances are if you have access to it, you don't have a, a phosphorus deficient soil in the first place. So yeah, it, it's very costly. It did, you know, we look at a range of uh, 15 to, to 30 uh, pounds of P2O5 to, to raise the soil test um, one part per million in ter for phosphate. So, so it, it, uh, it's not something that happens overnight and, and it really is a long-term strategy. Same with even, even on a, you know, a, a regular fertility program. It's still a long-term strategy because most of the phosphorus that we're applying this year, we're not going to see the benefit of it this year. We're going to see that down the road. So, so it really is a long-term approach when it comes to phosphorus, phosphorus management. For sure. I know lots of people were hit pretty hard with input prices this year. It may not improve much for next year. So that's some, something really good to keep in mind. You might be tempted to cut back, but it may have some pretty nasty long-term implications for your crop. Yeah. So if you've got a really good fertility program and have had for, for a number of years, chances are you're, you're in a pretty good spot. You've got some nutrients in the bank there. Um, so on a year like this, when, when fertilizer prices are high, if you want to make that decision as a, as a one-time thing to, to maybe not put quite the same high uh, rate on that you have in the past for a, for a nutrient such as phosphorus, um, I think that's acceptable as long as you, you're willingly doing it and, and knowing the, the ramifications of doing that and maybe even having a plan that, okay, and then down the road, maybe when FOSS prices are lower, I'm going to start trying to build those levels back up even more again. For sure. Lots to consider. Thanks for joining us today, Warren. Thank you.